जय हिंद स्टूडेंट्स टिल नाउ इन सेटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशन सब्जेक्ट वी स्टडीड अबाउट वेरियस थिंग इन विच फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी स्टडी अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ सेटेलाइट कम्युनिकेशन देन वी गो टूवर्ड्स द सेटेलाइट टाइप्स देयर ऑर्बिट्स देयर एप्लीकेशन ऑल दैट आफ्टर दैट आवर मेन कंसर्न इज अबाउट टू लोकेट द सेटाइल सेटेलाइट इन टू द स्पेस for that we derive the various orbital equipment by using the second order differential equation and also establish the link equation for that up in then the next part came into the picture and that is basically related to satellite link design actually when we are talking about satellite link design then to design a satellite system we have to create ground segment and the space segment ground station uh, ground segment basically consist of earth station with various uh, data producer and data sending units whether the space station segment is related to the satellite itself when we are talking about this satellite link uh, design actually we are creating a establishment between the satellite earth station and the satellite and during the designing of the satellite and earth station we have to derive various equations and the values of various parameters in the same segment the main concern is always about the noise because you know that in the communication part whenever your signal transmitted from the transmitter side and it travel from the channels noise will be introduced so noise is always going to play an important role in the designing of any communication system and same as that satellite is also facing the noise problems because in the satellite communication signal is going through the atmosphere to the towards the space and the various layers of the atmosphere plays a very important role in the designing of the satellite link design in that series first of all we derive the satellite link equation after that we go through the various uh, discussion on the satellite system temperature satellite noise temperature actually as per the definition of noise any unwanted uh, signal which uh, create any type of disturbance in the normal communication is known as noise so there are various kind of noise such as external noise internal noise as i told you in the previous lectures one of them is thermal noise and thermal noise is basically came into the picture due to the resistive component of the system if you are using a resistance in a particular circuit or any internal component which is offering some kind of resistance in the normal uh, Uh, normal propagation of the signal then it will create a noise due to the resistive uh, component so we have to find out the noise temperature because whenever thermal noise will came into the picture actually the temperature of that device will increase that is called noise temperature and then the next calculation that noise system noise temperature we already discussed in the previous one now to understand the performance of any receiver or any system we use a specific parameter that is called noise actually this noise figure came from the equation that is input snr ratio upon output snr ratio let's you are taking a receiver this is your receiver this is the input this is the output means for this receiver 
on this input side you have a signal which power is s and associated noise with this input signal is n its power is n so the ratio of signal to noise ratio at input side is called snr ratio of input similarly we can calculate snr ratio at output and by taking the ratio of input snr ratio with the output snr ratio we will get this noise figure and as you can see that in the snr ratio it will always be high because if snr ratio is high means signal power is high and noise power is low similarly snr out means when we are talking out about high snr ratio at output side means noise figure will be one or less than one so it means when we are talking about the noise figure value it will uh, it should always be one or less than one so noise figure is frequently used to specify the noise generated within a device and the operational noise figure is defined by the following formula so that noise figure somehow we are going to relate with the noise temperature we already derived in the previous uh, discussion so that noise temperature is more useful in satellite communication system as it is best to convert noise figure to noise temperature tn and that relationship came from the tn is equal to t not nf minus 1 kelvin so where the noise figure is a linear ratio not in decibel and where t not is the reference temperature used to calculate the standard noise figure at usually 290 kelvin so that formula is quite important because in your examination sometimes in aktu two marks question came into the university question paper or your puts that you have given the nf value you have the t not value and you have to find out the system noise temperature tn so that is quite easy but you always understand one point that this calculation is in the kelvin and if you are having some uh, value in the degree you should convert that uh, degree value in the kelvin first to solve the numerical so after taking this noise figure and noise temperature calculation we are going to find out the g by t ratio for the earth station actually g by t ratio when we are talking about the g by t actually t stand for the temperature and g stand for the gain gain to temperature ratio is always very helpful for the earth station designing in term of the cnr because for the earth station carrier to noise ratio going to play a very important role and as per the c by n ratio that we derived in the previous section that is c by n is equal to pt gt gr upon kts bn with the lambda upon 4 pi r whole square where pt gt is the e i r p as i told you earlier isotropic externally equivalent isotropically radiated power where bn is the bandwidth k is the boltzmann constant and the gr is the gain of the receiver so you can easily understand by this derivation that carrier to noise ratio is directly proportional to gr by ts where ts is the system temperature and gr is the gain of the receiver so in term of the square bracket are all constant because these all are the constants for a given satellite system that's why the ratio grts which is usually quoted as symbol simply g by t ratio in decibel with unit dbk minus 1 can be used to specify the quality of a receiving earth station or a satellite receiving system so since increasing g by rt increasing the received cnr so this is showing the relationship between the g, uh, g by t ratio with the cn that if g by t ratio is increasing 
then uh, the C by uh, CNR ratio will also increase received CNR ratio. So, satellite terminal may be quoted as having a negative G by T where which is below 0 to 1. This simply means that the numerical value of GR means the gain of the receiver is smaller than the numerical value of the TS. So, this G by T ratio is the final equation for designing of the earth station that is that is directly going to relate the uh, carrier to noise ratio with the uh, gain and the temp system temperature. So, as per our this discussion you easily understand one point that uh, your mostly numericals which are came into the university examples are on the G by T ratio or the EIRP and the loss equation that was the satellite link equation that all are going to be used for the numerical problem. So, now we take some uh, specific numerical problem which uh, comprise all these uh, uh, comprise use of all these equations and we should understand it. So, our first numerical is an earth station has a diameter of 30 meter means uh, this 30 meter is related to the antenna of the earth station. So, 30 meter with an if aperture efficiency of 68 percent means neta A, neta A. Then it is used to receive a signal at 4150 megahertz. At this frequency, the system noise temperature is 60 K when the antenna point at the satellite at an elevation angle of 28 degree. These are the given values means neta A is the 30 meter aperture efficiency is 68 percent and the frequency is 4150 megahertz and the receive signal and the system noise temperature for this is 60 Kelvin with the elevation angle of 28 degree. These are the inputs. So, what is the earth station G by T ratio under these conditions? Then the next part of this numerical is if heavy rains causes the sky temperature to increase so that the system noise temperature rises from 88 means 60 Kelvin to 88 Kelvin what is the new G by T ratio means you have to find out the G by T ratio and all the other values are given. So, how you are going to do that as you have the neta A first of all you have to calculate the received uh, receiver gain. So, when we are talking about the receiver gain GR is equal to neta A 4 pi A upon lambda square this is the formula which can be uh, uh, come, uh, de uh, derived also as neta A pi D upon lambda whole square by using that diameter part with this comparison. So, at we given that uh, 4150 megahertz lambda you have to calculate means F is equal to C by lambda. So, by this formula you can calculate uh, the lambda from this. 4150. So, for 510 megahertz frequency, we will get the lambda is wavelength is equal to 0 0.0723 meter. So, put these values in the equation. D is already given as 30 meter because you can see that that is 30 meter. So, do, you do not have to convert this. Put this value, solve this, then we will get this value that is 1.16 into 10 to the power 6 or 60.6 .6 dB that is in the dB that is the normal that value that is in db and for converting this into the db you use this formula 10 log 10 the value. Now, converting the ts into the dpk de, uh, de, decibel per kelvin decibel kelvin. So, you have the formula ts is equal to 10 log 10 60 because the value is 60 kelvin that is in the normal kelvin, but you have to convert it into dbk. So, 10 log 10 60 is equal to 17.8 dbk means G by T ratio is equal to 60.6 minus 17.8 that is 42.8 dBK that is the answer. So, then again new problem is here. They are saying that this is the answer of this first, first part. But when you are talking about this heavy rain condition, now system temperature will convert to 88 Kelvin. So, first of all you have to convert this 88 Kelvin into the, by using this formula in dbk you will get the value 
so by dividing 60 uh, subtracting 60.6 minus 19.4 you will get this 41.2 dbk this is a very important numerical which came into the previous university examination so you have to know that these all small formula with the uh, uh, diameter and all problems you can use for this then the next numerical which is also very important because this satellite equation in dbw is very used very vast in this equation so what is our numerical a satellite at a distance of 40000 km from a point on the earth surface radiated a power of 10 watt from an antenna with a gain of 17 db in the direction of the observer means that is all about the direction of the observer and the related points are 40,000 km above the earth surface and the all other values are there. So, find the flux density at the receiving point and the power received by an earth station antenna at this point with an effective area of 10 meter square. So, which kind of formula you are going to use here? You can easily find out that you have TR is equal to EIRP plus GR minus LP that is loss, where ERIP is equal to TTGT when we are going to convert it into dB. So, the, because basically it is in the watt, but when you are converting in decibel watt. So, similarly, gain that is in normal dB, you are going to convert it into this one. And because G is equal to that is the formula as per the A upon lambda square, that is the formula for the G. Then uh, Path loss is given by the 20 log 10 4 pi upon that is also the value. So, these all formula is going to use for this formula. How? See. You know that flux density formula is F is equal to Pg Gt upon 4 pi r square. P value is 10, 50, 4 pi 4 into 10 to the power 7, 10 square. That is the answer for the flux density. So, by using you because this is equal to Pt Gt. EIRP and flux is by using this upon 4 pi r square. So, from where this r is coming, you can see that uh, effective aperture of uh, area aperture of 10 meter square. So, you can solve this. This is here. Okay. Now, the power received with an effective uh, collecting area of 10 meter square is therefore PR is equal to 2.49 into 10 to the power minus 13. So, the calculation is more easily handled using decibel, noting that 10 log 10, 4 pi is equal to 11 dB around. So, F and dB, when you are going to calculate, this is the, that is the answer. Because when you apply the DA, logarithmic here, PT, GT are in the multiplication, so that log A plus log B and uh, another is log A by B ka formula use kare. So, F and dB is minus 136.0. So, then you can see that F is equal to F dB meter, then FR is equal, PR is equal to minus 136 from here plus 10, then that is the answer, 126 dBW or minus 96 dBm. So, here we put the antenna efficiency aperture into decibel greater than the 1 meter square and also given the answer in dBW and dBm. <coughs> decibel above 1 watt and 1 milliwatt. So, this is also a problem. So, another numerical again you can find out so that a satellite is in the previous exam means we are using that same points here again. We are just uh, solving this numerical to find out a specific condition. So, you can see that in the satellite is in the previous example operate at a frequency of 11 gigahertz and the receiving antenna gain is 52.3 find the received power at the earth station in dbw and the dbm it is common practice to code transmit power dbw and received power in db so that is the formula erip is already we can find out in the previous one you can see here 30 so 27 so by this formula so then uh, this one GR is equal to 52.3. So, path loss LP is equal to this. So, by putting all these five values in this equation, you can say 27, 52, 250.3, you will get this minus 126 dBW. So, the received power in dBm unit is numerically 30 dB greater than the dB 
W. So, in the same case for the second part, you can see that path loss, these are the here, these all values are the here. But PR is equal to 126 plus 30, that is minus 96. So, you can see here, in the previous example, the value is also minus 96. Now, we have the same answer because the figure of 52.3 dB is the gain of the 10 meter scratcher of the 11 gigahertz. Means, the antenna aperture is the same in the both cases. So, that is about the numerical problems. Now, after all these, we are going to concentrate on the satellite earth station. And when we are talking about the satellite earth station, that is basically divided into three types, that transmitting type, receiving type and transmit receiving type. Means, first of all, they are using only for the transmission purpose. Another one are only for the receiving purpose. Or third one is the both combination of transmission and receiving. So, when we, as we, we discuss the satellite, satellite have various subsystems such as communication system, subsystem, TTCM, AOCS, power supplies and other one. Similarly, earth station are also having some general, uh, it's a substation, a subsystems and that are antenna, generally reflector type, feed system and the track equipment. So, these are the satellite earth station basic factor on which station design depends. These factors are which type of service you are going to use, designing of the transmitter, designing of the receiver, function of that specific station means that is going to use for the transmission or for the receiving. Similarly, the characteristics of an antenna, the antenna which is going to use for there because sometimes you are going to use the same antenna for transmission and the receiving in duplex mode. Similarly, the frequency band of operation that one is the most important because first of all you have to find out the frequency band for which you are going to design that satellite earth station. So, this is the uh, diagram of a basic satellite earth station and you can see that uh, this is the terrestrial network which is going to be directly connected through the antenna and uh, that is collected, uh, connected with the base band equipment. This base band equipment are basically having antennas that is a uh, parabolic reflector antenna are mostly used. So, this upper part is showing the uh, uh, this uh, uh, Basically, you uh, sorry, uh, uh, my mistake. Uh, I am just uh, giving you the wrong example. This is the terrestrial network. This is the terrestrial network. When we are got, uh, talking about the terrestrial network, actually, the terrestrial network is the lower part from where you are going to collect the data, which is going to be transmitted, or terrestrial network is the part which is uh, going to take the information from the outer space. So, that is part is another. So, our antenna is basically here. This is the antenna which is receiving the signals from the space or sending the. If it is a transmitting earth station means it is getting the data from high power amplifier, up converter, modulator and encoder. If it is a receiving type then the, uh, basically the another part is going to use. So, these all designing are as per the previous one, the low noise amplifier, use of high power amplifiers that are all required for the basic function. So, encoding, decoding are also the important part of the satellite association. So, by this uh, lecture, we conclude the complete uh, satellite uh, link design and the satellite earth station designing. And, uh, we discussed uh, the various uh, parameters and the factor which are responsible for the designing of a satellite earth station. So, in the next lecture, we are going to describe the another aspect of the satellite communication. So, till then, thank you.